Hello class, Mr. Allman here, uh, and today's Allman cast is on the endocrine system. Now the endocrine system is all about hormones and the places where those hormones are produced. And before you get too excited, uh, today's video is not going to cover information on the sex hormones like testosterone and estrogen. Uh, however, we will get to those in a future video uh, when we cover the reproductive system. Uh, the things that we do need to cover today um, are about the endocrine system in general, uh, which you should know. Uh, it is made up of glands, which are the parts that make the hormones, and those hormones are going to be transported through the blood. Uh, I'm going to give you some specific examples of types of hormones, uh, and certainly the types of feedback that are involved, so we can review positive and negative feedback. Uh, but what is uh, most significant is the example of blood sugar regulation, uh, which came up uh, a little bit um, in the a human energy system unit, um, but we want to uh, recover again the idea of insulin and glucagon. Um, so hormones are all about communication uh, within the body and both long-term and short-term uh, communication uh, in order to be able to coordinate different cells uh, within different tissues within the body um, so that as conditions change in the environment those hormones will respond to those changes. Uh, so a little bit of theory first, um, and the theory here is about cell communication. Um, so we'll get a little back on a little bit back um, to some previous topics in the course, uh, which is on cells and how cells interact with each other. Uh, so cell communication is the uh, is the topic. Uh, so in in terms of what's happening, uh, when signals come in, uh, there needs to be a receptor. Um, so reception of the signal uh, by the cell that signal needs to be passed on. And so usually there's a whole set of chemicals uh, that might bind together or change in some way to be able to take that signal uh, and then carry that signal on to uh, form some type of response. Uh, certainly a lot of molecules involved and so hormones will be the type of molecule we're focused on today. Uh, now signals are often local, so some types of hormones are really only, uh, when they're produced, they're gonna be released and only uh, cause some type of change in the cells immediately next door. So if you look at the picture here, you can see uh, if these little red dots are representing hormones, uh, those hormones have an impact on the cell, and then the cells that are immediately next to it called the target cells. Uh, in many cases, cells are going to be physically connected or, or very close by, and there are some uh, very particular structures in the cell that are designed to allow chemicals from one cell to be given to another. And the whole purpose here is so that cells can coordinate. So if you have one heart cell that is contracting, all of the heart cells next to it should also contract at the same time. So it makes sense that one cell needs to communicate and coordinate with the others that are going to be nearby. Uh, but other signals need to be sent far distances. And uh, say, for example, your brain needs to send a signal to your liver, uh, to a muscle, to a toe. Um, and in those cases, you've got really two ways of doing it. You have the nervous system, which is uh, usually fast, recognized immediately, and the response is immediate. Uh, the endocrine system uh, is going to be long-term regular regulation. So communication that's not uh, necessarily this instant, but communication that is going to be uh, lasting for minutes uh, or hours or years. Uh, looking at the two different types here um, in terms of how hormones are going to be received, it depends on the chemistry of the hormone itself. If we look for a second at the few different at the two different types, on the left we have the water soluble hormones. So those water soluble hormones uh, are going to be released. They're going to travel through the blood, as all hormones do. Uh, when they exit the blood, they're going to uh, physically attach to a receptor on the outside of the cell membrane. So this is going to be some type of membrane protein. Uh, that when that hormone binds to the membrane protein, a signal is going to be sent through a new batch of chemicals on the inside of the cell to the nucleus where some effect is going to be had. We'll come back to an example of that. Lipid-soluble hormones will travel again through the blood, will exit the blood, and then because they are lipid-soluble, they can, they can move immediately through the plasma membrane into the cell, and they will physically go to the nucleus where they're going to have some type of impact. When we look at the, the chemistry involved there, we can see that those hormones that are made up of mostly proteins, uh, like, for example, epinephrine, uh, they are going to be water-soluble. So proteins will dissolve in water, whereas those that are lipid-soluble, they're hydrophobic, um, and they're usually going to be steroids. Um, so things like testosterone, cortisol, thyroxine, um, these could be some of the common examples. Uh, as as we look at then uh, the response, the, the difference here in response between two types on the left, um, this is going to be our 
uh, this is going to be the response of the water soluble. An example here is uh, going to be epinephrine. So uh, if epinephrine, epinephrine uh, when it hits the uh, exterior of the cell, it's going to bind to a receptor. It's going to pass on through a whole cascade of other little reactions that will happen between chemicals within the cell. And then uh, eventually what will happen is that we're going to get a, a, a transcription factor, something that's going to kickstart uh, the cell into making uh, some particular new product. Now for epinephrine, uh, that is what's going to be released during the fight or flight response. So one of the things that uh, needs to happen at that point is that the cell uh, is going to, let's say it's a muscle cell, needs to make a lot of glucose. So the transcription factor might produce more of the enzymes that are going to be, that are going to help glycolysis and cell respiration to occur. So epinephrine leads to the creation uh, by, uh, by the cell of additional materials needed to mediate that response. Generate some more sugar, uh, or generate more, use sugar to generate more ATP. On the other hand, uh, on the right, if we have the example of testosterone, this is going to be a lipid-soluble hormone. The testosterone enters, uh, it'll pass directly through the membrane, uh, it'll get attached to a receptor protein, and those things will travel together into the nucleus, and then those will do something like uh, create uh, some of the enzymes that will uh, are going to be necessary for meiosis, because testosterone is uh, a major protein that controls sperm production. So testosterone comes into the cells, say in the testes, and uh, will, as it comes in, will cause the nucleus uh, to create, to transcribe, and then produce more proteins necessary to make more sperm. Now, there's a difference in terms of uh, effects. So those things that are going to be lipid hormones, they tend to have long-term long effects. So a sex hormone, for example, when, when it's produced, will have an effect over the course of it's going to have the effect over the course of days or weeks, uh, whereas epinephrine, it really just lasts a few minutes. If you think about that fight or flight response, like if you get, uh, you know, immediately if you get scared and your heart starts beating very fast, uh, the effect of that heart beating is really only going to last a couple of minutes, and then your heart slows down because uh, that hormone uh, is going to be metabolized and it's, and it's going to its effect is going to wear off a lot faster. Uh, some applications won't get into specifics, but there's uh, certainly a lot of applications uh, far beyond just what, what happens in humans. Uh, there are plant hormones, and there are hormones in every, every type of animal. And uh, those hormones are going to be responsible for things like making pheromones, which you know is a chemical attraction between, uh, between individuals uh, looking to mate. Uh, metamorphosis is a great, great example of hormones in action. Uh, they are, again, longer-term impacts on the body. Uh, so now, uh, if we spend the rest of the video kind of going through a few examples uh, of some different glands in the body, where those glands are, uh, and what types of hormones they produce. Uh, an, an important place to begin uh, is in the brain, because this is really where everything is going to be controlled. And you see three parts. The hypothalamus, which itself is part of the brain. So the hypothalamus is not a gland, uh, but it is uh, going to kind of coordinate the response of all the glands. Uh, it's going to send signals to the pituitary gland, uh, and this is really super important uh, in terms of then signaling other glands to be able to make other stuff. So the brain is ultimately controls uh, both endocrine and nervous system, and, and the hypothalamus is going to be the place where one, where the brain really communicates to all of those glands and tells them what to do. Uh, some examples of feedback here, uh, a positive feedback. Again, uh, as I said in class, it's less less common, uh, but uh, some examples uh, still to help illustrate the point. Uh, this is an example of suckling. Uh, so suckling is uh, when you know an infant, uh, is, uh, a mammalian infant or a human infant is going to be uh, is going to be drinking breast milk. Uh, when when the baby latches on uh, to the the female's breast, uh, that sends a stimulus that the uh, nerve cells in the breast will will feel that stimulus of the baby beginning to suck, and then that will send a signal to the hypothalamus in the brain, uh, which will release uh, a signal uh, through the blood um, of creating uh, a hormone called oxytocin. Oxytocin uh, is going to stimulate the smooth muscle in the breasts to be able to release milk. When that milk is released, it sends a response back to the brain to uh, to make more. More oxytocin goes into the blood, 
uh, causing more smooth muscle to be stimulated to release more milk, uh, and more milk uh, then gets sucked by the baby. And so uh, as long as that suckling continues, as long as there's that input coming in, it's positive feedback to create more of the hormone. Uh, then obviously if the suckling stops, then the signal shuts off, and then there's no longer going to be uh, the creation of that oxytocin. Now for negative feedback, this is usually in response to, this is going to be in response to some change. Uh, so something, uh, something we need to return back to a normal condition. Uh, so, you know, the hypothalamus uh, will send a signal to the pituitary gland to make a hormone. Uh, that hormone uh, will be released, it'll go to its target cells. Uh, so something like, uh, this is again, could be epinephrine, uh, where it is, uh, we have the endocrine cell in the adrenal gland in the kidney, next to the kidney, will make the epinephrine, epinephrine goes to the target cells to increase uh, the metabolism within the cells. Uh, then once that hormone is produced and the hormone is in the blood, feedback goes back to the hypothalamus, telling the hypothalamus to stop. The hormone has been made, it's time to stop making more. So the presence of the hormone, the presence of the finished product, tells the brain to stop production because we've already made enough. A pituitary gland uh, receives input from the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is, in most cases, is just is only sending its signal next door to the pituitary gland to make what it wants to make. Uh, these could be hydrophilic, um, protein-based type uh, hormones. So there you can see a uh, pituitary gland hanging down from below the hypothalamus. Here's the hypothalamus above, and then we have two parts, the posterior and anterior pituitary below. Uh, they make a whole bunch of things, and you can see, you can look at this, and you can come back to this Prezi linked from the website to be able to, to tour a little more closely. Uh, but you can see uh, hormones including, you know, uh, oxytocin uh, from the uh, hormones that are going to, to trigger the production of sex hormones. Uh, we have signals going to the thyroid, uh, to the mammary glands. Uh, we have growth hormone, and so there's a whole host of things that are made by the pituitary. Again, hypothalamus sends a signal uh, that goes travels through the blood a very short distance into the pituitary. Pituitary then makes the hormones that travel elsewhere. Uh, the thyroid, the thyroid you can see listed here, the thyroid is, is kind of covering the trachea. Uh, so it's in this area uh, immediately uh, kind of at the towards the base of the neck. Uh, it is uh, involved in making a couple of hormones uh, named T3 and T4, which are helpful in regulating metabolism, and we need uh, iodine uh, to, for the thyroid to work properly. Uh, and you can see uh, from the picture here uh, that uh, if you don't have iodine, uh, you, this thyroid will swell up. It'll, it'll triple, quadruple, ten times bigger in size, uh, and as it swells up it creates this non-cancerous growth called a goiter. Uh, salt is iodized now, uh, distributed throughout the world to lower the number of people uh, who have this iodine deficiency. The parathyroid right next door to it, uh, the parathyroid uh, is involved in calcium, uh, and we'll move forward here to the pancreas now. Uh, the pancreas is the biggest gland in the body, um, so all it's doing is just pumping out hormones uh, in addition to the other stuff that it makes um, for like digestive enzymes. Uh, in the pancreas, there's a couple kinds of cells, alpha, alpha cells and beta cells, that are significant for the regulation of blood sugar. Uh, and you should remember some of this from, uh, from our human energy system. Uh, but just to review, if your blood sugar is too high, like, for example, you just had a big meal or you drank a Coke, you've got a lot of sugar in your blood uh, as a product of digestion. Uh, that, if you follow the red, sends a signal to the pancreas. The pancreas, the beta cells, are going to make insulin. That insulin is going to tell uh, cells to take up sugar from the blood. So that will help to reduce the amount of sugar that's in the blood because it's going to be taken up by body cells. Uh, also it sends a signal to the liver to take the glucose and turn the glucose into glycogen. And glycogen is that uh, is going to be a polymer of glucose that's a way of storing energy. Uh, and then that will get stashed away in the liver or in some of your muscles. Now, if your blood sugar is low, like you fasting, you know, it's the middle of the night, uh, then this is going to promote your pancreas to be able, your alpha cells in your pancreas to produce glucagon. The glucagon is going to tell your liver to take all that glycogen and start breaking it down. So we're going to, uh, we're, uh, we're going to uh, hydrolyze it 
uh, to form glucose, and that glucose will then be released into the blood, and as a result, it's going to raise your blood sugar. So knowing, uh, you certainly need to know the difference between these two hormones, uh, what effect they have on the body systems, and the types of cells that are going to produce those. Uh, for, you have your adrenal glands make things like epinephrine, uh, which was mentioned earlier in the video. Uh, so these are, are located uh, directly above, if we go back, here's your adrenal glands. They're located directly above uh, your kidneys. Um, so uh, really kind of physically attached to it. Uh, fight or flight response um, is an important one here. That burst of energy comes from the epinephrine, uh, which does things like raise your heart rate, uh, raise your uh, respiration rate, um, and increases metabolism. Uh, what we will cover uh, again a little bit later are uh, some of these, are, are what are called your gonads. Your gonads are the parts of your endocrine system. Uh, in males, the testes. In females, the ovaries that make hormones that then regulate uh, the uh, your reproductive systems. And so we'll get to those in a future video. Uh, but for now, uh, that is a uh, overview of the endocrine system and hormones and what it is that they do. Uh, one final thing that I'll point out, you can take a look uh, on the Prezi. Uh, here's a, a pretty exhaustive list of types of hormones, uh, where it is that they act, what type of hormone it is, and what they do. Uh, and again, if you have any questions, please ask me in class.